Well, one country that has outright condemned the killing of Hania is Turkey, whose president called a treacherous assassination. To get some Turkish reaction, I'm now joined on the line from Ankara by Turkish MP by the ruling AK party, Abdurrahman Babajan. Good morning to you and welcome to Newsday. I would like to get your thoughts first on your reaction to the killing of Ismail Khanir. Hi, thanks. Uh, first of all, uh, I guess Israel has a major existential problem since foundation. Its state policies that systematically violated international law since the UN's 1947 partition plan and how this destabilized the Middle East. The Hania assassination, uh, in my opinion, is the last link in this chain. The issue here is therefore uh, not a personal group in itself, but the fact that Israel has systematically implemented the occupation with some so-called political theological references and uh, has determined the state policy in strong rights. Uh, it implements a policy of annihilation and intimidation by implementing all kinds of uh, policy against any person or group that poses an obstacle to that policy. So, uh, for example, look at the assassinations of uh, Sheikh Ahmed Yassin and Rantisi, for example, or in crashing of a civilian activist, Rashal Khori, under tanks, or in killing of human rights defenders by snipers or in deliberate targeting of international media representatives with bullets. All of these were natural targets of Israel in this context, and what they all have in common is that they object to the policies implemented by Israel. I think we need to look at Hania assassination from that perspective. But some also might say that Ms. Hania himself had human rights violations, claims against him. We all saw what happened on October the 7th in southern Israel. And that was by the group that he was leading, that was by Hamas. Uh, we should uh, say that, unfortunately, these concepts have been very polluted and have been uh, somehow abused concepts when it comes to conception of human rights in Western world, especially people from almost all nations of the world, especially the youth generation, have started to see the uh, hypocrisy here. That's uh, why it's no longer very convincing. Uh, let's put this aside. And, uh, however, uh, when the genocide that Israel has been carrying out in Gaza for months is mentioned, the reference is made to the events of October 7th. Yes, sure. And now, uh, I guess the same thing is being done in this question, uh, in the assassination uh, to uh, Ismail Haniye also. Uh, we should be sure about that. Condemning the violence against Israeli civilians and fighting it in uh, a frame of law is one thing. Uh, but killing more than 40,000 people in a matter of months, regardless of babies, children, women or elderly, and using the October 7 as a shield for this is another, is totally another. So the question is that, can a state still continue to exist as a legitimate state by carrying out assassinations, hunting people, and systematically killing innocent civilians, children, and babies? So why do the international legal frameworks the rights of the sovereignty of countries, mm -hmm. interstate relations and agreements exist. Or in other, in another way, where are we in a jungle where the strong set the rules and can do whatever yeah. it wants, whenever Mr. it wants, Mr. and Bukajan, whatever it wants. Thank you so much for your time, and I just 